Hey, welcome hi. to the Q and A. Hi. You can say hi. <laughs> <laughs> I won't interrupt your hi. You did. You have as much time as you want. Go ahead. I'll give you thirty seconds to say hello. Time's up. Uh, <laughs> that's really hard. <laughs> I did. I didn't literally mean thirty seconds for the one word. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, so we're doing a Q&A. Why don't you explain it? Okay. <laughs> so every month or so, we, ta we tally up. We gather up our questions that we get asked a lot or things we've been asked that month, and we go through them here on this video and try to give a quick, uh, no BS answer to your nutrition and fitness questions. So if you have your own question that you'd like to get asked, you can comment or message us, and we'll add it to our videos, but we'll also make sure you get a quick answer too. Yep, and we're gonna try to do the questions even, or the answers a little bit faster than normal, just to get as many as we can done in a shorter amount of time. And if you have more uh, questions, follow-up questions, just let us know. Yeah. So let's do it. Okay, I've Question. been practicing my auctioneer voice, so I'm ready. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're taking these things very literally today. All right, first question. Do I need to eat right after I work out? And is there a certain type of food I should eat? So in other words, what's the, what's the best meal after a workout? Okay, I hear this one a lot. People want to know what's the best pre or post workout meal that they should be having. And ideally, the best situation is one to two hours before or after working out, you have a balanced meal. And that includes a protein, a carb, and or fat and veggies. And that is sufficient enough to give you the energy before and during and after your workout. In other words, there's not a specific, like you have to eat within 15 minutes and it has to be this certain specific thing. It's a lot, a lot easier than that. For our clients who are not elite athletes, just regular people, they don't really need to worry about nutrient timing or meal timing as far as getting a protein shake in during or after a workout. It's cool. just not that big of a deal. Okay. Let's jump to one of these questions. Um, that was a good answer. So I was assuming you were done. I'm done. I can okay. keep going, but I'm done. No. Okay. Let's do. Let's do this one. Are okay. are scales that measure body fat accurate? Well, I can answer this one. Okay. So no, <laughs> they're actually very inaccurate, and they I. If you were interested, I could literally show you like the studies that show how inaccurate they are. The general idea is that almost any scale that you would be using, whether it's at home or at a gym or at like a nutrition supplement shop where they have them, those, those types of scales are generally off by about, can be off by a, as much as like 10 percentage points. So if you're, if it says you're 30%, it could be as low as 20 or it could be as high as 40. So that's, it could be totally accurate. The problem is you don't know for sure. And so anytime you go and step on the scales and it gives you a reading, it could be that far off and it's not consistent from time to time. So it's really not ever a good way to get an accurate reading. And even if, even if it's not that far off, it actually can be just as big of a problem if like it's just a little bit off. Um, because if you are losing weight and then you step on it and the next time it's a little bit off on the high end, you could think, oh, my progress isn't working. And so even if it's off a little bit, we recommend not using those types mm -hmm. of scales because you're better off just looking at your weight, your measurements, uh, just how do you feel in your clothes, that type of pictures. thing. That's going to give you a better indication of whether you're making progress than what those scales were because they can, they can either say real wrong on one end or the other. <laughs> totally. Okay, let's do uh, let's do an exercise one. Which one okay. of these? Um, what equipment do I absolutely have to have if I want to work out at home but don't want a massive gym or have room for a massive gym? What equipment do I need to work out at home? Yeah, okay, so yeah, that's the su summary there. I, I sum it. summarized I the long question into something short, but that's, that's fine. Um, so what equipment do you need to work out at home? None. You can get, even with us, we we say that you should prioritize strength workouts. Yeah. You don't need anything, but there are just a couple things that would make it a little bit less cumbersome or more comfortable. Well, that's what I'm going to say. Okay. Yeah. Well, I beat you to it. <laughs> yes. So you don't need any because there are plenty of exercises you can do without any equipment. 
and ones that you generally would use equipment for. We've had plenty of clients who use a backpack and fill it up with whatever. So you can use makeshift weights at home even for that. I generally tell people that it's a good idea to have some weights. And what I recommend getting first is just a set of dumbbells. A bench would be great too, but even if all you have is dumbbells, that's a really great yeah. starting point. And you could just live with the dumbbells and have nothing else mm -hmm. beyond that. So if you're talking about like, you don't wanna have a whole room of your house dedicated toward being a gym, just want minimal equipment, I'd say get a set of adjustable dumbbells, at least up to 50 pounds. You would be surprised how quickly you might be able to go beyond that but at least up to 50 pounds and then a bench will add some variety into what you can do with the exercises too so i would say start with that mm -hmm. uh, and i could go into some of the other stuff that then you could grow and build beyond that um i use our exercise ball every once in a while we have some resistance bands mm -hmm. that we use every once in a while um, i like having a pull-up bar with some either trx bands or um, rings. I'll say a yoga mat because yoga it's mat. just a little bit more comfortable. Like, and it's also mentally like a dedicated floor space to do your stuff. And that just sounds yeah. silly, but there's just things that make it a little bit nicer. But in the end, you don't absolutely need any of it. You can right. do it without it. So all those things we mentioned, and then ultimately just like, if you've got dumbbells, it's gonna make it working out so much easier than not having weight. So I do recommend having that, but you don't necessarily need it. Okay. Okay, should I, this is a diet question. Um, this one's always so controversial, but let's, let's we're gonna do it anyway. It. Should I be worried about the artificial sweeteners in diet soda? Okay. Or is diet soda bad for you? Yeah, um, I am gonna give you an answer. No. <laughs> now, if you're having like buckets and buckets of artificial sweetener or, or like tons of diet soda a day, yeah, maybe that's not the best thing for you. But if you're trying to avoid excessive sugar intake, then artificial sweetener or diet soda might be a good choice for you. So it really is a kind of depending on the person and what your goals are to reduce sugar or reduce artificial and more processed items in your diet. So or just really, reduce calories. Reducing calories, yeah. It really depends on your goal and it doesn't even have to be for the rest of your life too. It can just be for a season of you trying to work on something. So there is no set in stone answer except probably in excessive amounts like anything else is not a good idea. I will just say though that the just to give the scientific answer because there's been a lot of research on artificial sweeteners and what used to be known years ago is even more known now uh there and there were some a couple scary research papers that came out and said oh this is artificial sweeteners so bad for you and since then there's been so much other research and so right now the the pretty clear indication with the research as a whole if you look at all of it is that artificial sweeteners are not anything to worry about. We could argue about that, I'm sure, with some people uh, for ever because whatever, but yeah. that's that's what the research is saying right now. I agree with you that too much of anything is probably not a good idea, but there certainly isn't any reason to fear the artificial sweeteners right yeah. now. Okay, I'll see the next one. Okay, Fitness. this one or that one? Let's do um, this one. Okay. Why can't I do push-ups no matter how much I try? Okay, so yeah. So generally this question comes from, uh, from women. The, although I, I also want to clarify that we have most of the men who work with us are unable to do push-ups from the floor when they first, really good push-ups from the floor. Like men can generally maybe like get a couple mm -hmm. that don't look real pretty and, and knock those out. But most of our clients, men or women have trouble with this. Women are typically the ones who ask this though, because the truth is as a woman, you will have a harder time building up strength to do push-ups. Mm -hmm. So it takes a lot of consistency. So the reason why you wouldn't be able to do it is one obviously you just don't have the strength and so if yet yet so if you're saying no matter how much i try i would have to know what specifically you've tried but if you're saying like okay i've done strength exercise and i haven't i have still am unable to do push-ups normally what that means is either you either your exercise program has not been effective 
like to in building strength or if you really want to do push-ups you might need to very specifically work on that and mm -hmm. and that takes then a specific type of uh of putting your program together in order to build up that specific strength mm -hmm. so if you haven't been able to do it it's probably just because you need a program that specifically is going to get you to that point, if that's something you care about. And that just means you're gonna have to build up, you're gonna have to do push-ups more often, you're gonna have to find ways to strengthen your upper body. And and you definitely can get to the point where you're gonna be able to do them. We, we did a video, a reel recently, a couple of reels about what you can do if you wanna be able to do push-ups. I recommend starting with hand elevated push-ups. So, don't do push-ups on your knees. Do them either on a counter or even up against the wall. Um, if you'd like to see that video and, and hear all of the different things he says, just message us or comment in here and we can link it. Yeah. For you. But the, the point is you definitely can. The, and if, if you feel like you've worked on it, then you probably just need probably just need a better exercise program that's going to strengthen you yeah. better than what you've done in the past. Real strategic. Because there's no reason why you shouldn't eventually be able to get there with the realistic expectation for women specifically that it takes longer. It really does. It, it, <laughs> so it's not going to happen within a few weeks. It's, we're talking months. Mm -hmm. Of heart, like really good consistency. Dedicated work. Yeah. Okay. All right. Last question. Okay. What would you say if I said I want to lose 30 pounds as fast as possible? Or just what's the fastest way to lose 30 pounds? Either way. Do you want to? <laughs> so the, okay. The, I'm going to, I actually want to answer both sides of that question. It's two, it's two different questions. If you want to lose 30 pounds as fast as possible, I would say you've probably got the wrong mindset for losing weight and you shouldn't do it at all. That would be my first answer because the goal with losing weight is should be okay how am i going to keep this weight off once it's gone mm -hmm. and if you go into it with just the mindset of i just want to get this off as fast as possible you're not going to build up the habits and learn the things that you need to know in order to keep the weight off and so go back to what you've been doing and gain even more weight it's not going to be healthy yeah now i do want to answer the other side of this question though there is a fastest way to lose 30 pounds so i am definitely not saying that if you want to lose 30 pounds that you just have to take forever to do it because weight loss is a slow thing because no, there you can do it faster. Some ways are faster than others. And so if you want to know the fastest way to do it, first of all, I would recommend trying to the absolute fastest that is recommended for most people is around 1% of your body weight per week. So if you're 200 pounds, that's two pounds a week that mm -hmm. you could lose. The way that you do that is very simple is you have to eat the right amount of food and you have to be active meaning two to three strength based workouts a week and then having a high step count or just if you don't track your steps be be active move from sedentary to a little bit more active yeah, yeah. and and ultimately so the goal is to find a balance of where you don't feel miserable doing those things and you're able to lose weight as quickly as possible you very well may find that that two pounds a week or whatever it would be for you is really really hard yeah. that level of commitment and sacrifice might not be worth it for you yeah you might find that you can see a little bit of success at a slower rate and a little bit more comfortable in your lifestyle without having to sacrifice as much. And that's what we do with our coaching. So if you want help with this, what we can help you find is where is that balance for you? We can say, okay, here's where you need to be with how much you need to eat, mm -hmm. how active you need to be. And then you let us know, like, I'm not losing weight as fast as I want, or wow, this is a lot harder than I thought. I'd rather slow it down. And we can help you kind of balance all three of those things so that you don't have to figure it out. And guess which piece needs to be changed. And yep. yeah, because it, honestly, it really is easy, but doing it yourself is hard because there's, it's hard to be objective about it. That's what I was gonna say, yeah. Yeah, so we would love to help you with that. That's what we do. So We're really good at that. We're good at <laughs> just dissecting like what what is really worth it to you and, and what do you really want and, and how can we get there without making your life miserable. No, I agree. I'm just that you took me to my surprise. You're like, we're good at that, which well, we are. We are. So <laughs> so let us know if you want help with that. Yeah. That's it. If you've got any other questions, we'd love to answer them. Send them over to us. 
or you can uh, get in touch with us about working with you and helping you make all of this way easier on you because we'll just tell you kind of what you need to do. Yep. All, right. all right, and we will see you next time.